Hey guys, glad we can meet for coffee today. Always a worthwhile endeavor. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at Clock Tower 3, which is actually a game that I've always wanted to give a go. I've seen bits and pieces about it over the years, and I have played, for the OGs that have stuck around this channel for long enough, we have played the uh, the first one on the PlayStation, which is actually technically the second game. And that actually was one of the first LPs I ever actually created. We also, a few years later, played Ghost Head, which is technically the third game in the series. It is a bit weird. Uh, and that was a, you know steaming pile of shit and probably one of the worst games that I've ever played. Uh, we're going to forget about that one and we're going to be taking a look at Clock Tower 3 on the PlayStation 2. Now I've heard that this game is actually quite a lot different to uh, the originals. Gone are the point and click controls which I'm okay with to be fair. Um, it has a more tank sort of Resident evil -y control system. Uh, it seems to be quite similar to Haunting Ground in a way, which we've also covered on the channel. And those of you that have seen my Haunting Ground LP will know that I'm actually quite fond of that game. I really, really enjoyed it. In fact, uh, I do believe Haunting Ground was originally supposed to be uh, Clock Tower 4 or 5, whatever, uh, the next Clock Tower game, but uh, uh, things got changed. So, got a bit of information here. Clock Tower 3 is a survival horror game co-produced by Capcom and Sunsoft, released for the PlayStation 2 in 2002. It is the fourth installment, there we go, you see. It is the fourth installment in the Clock Tower series, but stands out as the first and only game in the series directed by Japanese film director Kinji Fukasaku. Uh, the game follows a 14-year-old Alyssa Hamilton who travels through time to defeat evil spirits and bring peace to troubled souls. Well, I think that's the cause we can drink. Two. So gameplay, direct control. Unlike previous Clock Tower games, which used a point and click mechanics, Clock Tower 3 allows direct control over the protagonist. Evade and hide. Alyssa must evade and hide from enemies known as subordinates throughout the game. Combat. Alyssa is unarmed for most of the game, but uses a longbow to fight subordinates at the end of each level. That's interesting, uh, because Clock Tower has always been more about running and hiding, and I don't like that in a horror game. You know, I've, I've never pretended anything otherwise. I like to be able to actually kill the enemies. I like to have a fighting chance. Uh, this hide-and-seek stuff is generally not for me, but in Clock Tower, it works. So the idea that we actually have to run and hide from them and then at some point we get the opportunity to fight back, I'm down for. So, this game was a collaboration developed by some Sunsoft and Capcom after the original developer Human Entertainment. There we go, they went out of business in 2000. Shame, uh, you know, or is it? I don't know, don't really remember much of what they made apart from Clock Tower. Uh, so this game, ah, this game had a mixed reception. Um, the game received mixed reviews, praised for its presentation and cutscenes, but criticized for repetitive gameplay and short length. See, you know, it's funny that we have so many games these days that are criticized for their short length. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing as, you know, I'd rather play a game that's four hours long, but it's a fantastic quality four hours than something that's just stretched over 20. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 remake. Um, that game just went on way too long. You know, they said they doubled the size of it. I think they actually almost tripled the size of it, but whatever. I actually enjoyed the remake. 
But it was too long. That's neither here nor there. So, apparently this game has a cinematic quality to the game's cutscenes, which, well, I mean, if Haunting Ground is anything to go by, uh, they should be pretty good, because Haunting Ground was just, like, the quality of that game, the budget of that game, and the attention to detail was amazing. Yes, we played it on an emulator with all the enhancements, but, you know. Holy Water... Alyssa can use holy water to temporarily stun enemies, adding a unique gameplay mechanic. Okay. That's interesting because we also played Nightcry. And one of my criticisms about Nightcry was the chase mechanics were shit, but... That when you were being chased by the enemy, there was so little you could actually do. There was next to no hiding spots. The few that there were, you could only use once. So to have some kind of weapon that we can use reliably to stun enemies and get away with from them, yeah, I'm down for that. And historical settings. This game features time travel. Really? All right. Uh, to different historical periods, including the 1940s and the 1960s. Uh, yeah, didn't know that. I'm not the world's biggest fan of time travel. I find it a questionable mechanic that just leaves you open to so many plot holes, it's impossible to fill. However, with that being said, Let's take a look at Clock Tower 3, shall we? This game includes disturbing content and scenes of graphics violence. Well, we like that. This makes us internally happy. However, we don't appear to have any audio. There we go. Directed by Kinji. Okay. I'd have liked to have read that. If, you know, possible. Well, that certainly looks like a clock tower. Okay, well, that is different. Wasn't quite expecting that. Seems to that we have some kind of ominous cryptic figure. Standard for the series, I suppose. What isn't standard for the series is a actual clock tower ascending from the ground. That's different. And why is my controller not working? It was working earlier. It's now not working. One second. Okay, we now have full control. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go for options. See what sort of um, options we have. Probably not much, to be honest, because that was the style of the time. I do remember that monitor configuration screen. Ah, yes, classic. And, of course, to correct your image. I never... 
I never had any use for that screen correction, though. Like, I never played a game at any point that wasn't centered correctly. Um, as long as I wasn't using some kind of foreign conversion system, you know, like a HDMI converter or something like that. So search is on the X button. Duck is on the circle button. Walk is on the X. Uh, walk, I should say, is on the square. Attack is Y or triangle. That's interesting. Special arrow. All right. Oh, God, no. Stop changing things. There we go. Um, okay, I'm I'm sure we'll figure it out. Doesn't seem to be overly complex. So let's hit new game and head into Clock Tower. Three. I'm excited. These cinematics are not rendered properly. How have you been? I think of you every day. It seems such a long time since you started your life at boarding school. It was after your beloved grandfather went missing while traveling three years ago that I sent you away to boarding school and told you not to come back for at least six years Oof. without giving you any explanation. It must have been very painful for you, and I'm sorry, but it was for your own protection. Now, your 15th birthday is approaching, and I fear your life may be in danger more than ever before. Please, go into hiding until your 15th birthday has passed. I know that what I am saying will make no sense to you, but please, do as I tell you and hide as quickly as you can. Your loving mother, Nancy. Mum. Alyssa, you're wanted on the telephone. It's your mother. Hello? Mum? Hello? Are you there? What's wrong? Answer me. Hello? Hello? Mum? Hello? Mum? Mum? Answer me. <laughs> That's a lot to lay on a child. from the beginning. Um, excuse me. Are you one of the lodgers? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm Alyssa, Nancy's daughter. Um, do you know where my mother is? Your mother has gone out. That was early yesterday morning. Huh? She mentioned that she would not be coming back for some time. What? She was wrong. She won't be coming back at all. Ooh. So it's just you. You are all alone in this world now, little girl. Um. <laughs> My sweet Alyssa. I've been waiting so long for this moment. Get away from the me. fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck? Um. Okay, so this is pretty heavy stuff. So we've just found out that we are a 14-year-old girl. Um, we got sent away for six years. We've come back. Mummy's buggered off. And we've got some kind of weird, creepy pervert that's dribbling over a 14-year-old a, girl. Uh, sure. I mean, you know, it's a very Japanese plot, I suppose. The light from the fire casts a reddish glow. Game looks nice, which is more than I can say for those cinematics. The clock keeps perfect time. 
So I'm guessing this is Alyssa's house then, and she has some kind of lodger living, or maybe she did have some lodgers or some servants or something. Uh, yeah, and telling a, a you know a girl of that age that her life is in danger and stuff like that. Yeah, pretty heavy stuff. So this is the map. Oh, okay. And a, I guess a decent map it is as well. The only trouble is, I'm guessing we're in that dining room. Um, it doesn't actually show us where we are on the map, which is curious. We can't use the magic arrow. We have no attack. We can duck. I don't know what the purpose of being able to duck is, but I'm sure things will be made perfectly clear. A diary lies open with an incomplete entry. Doesn't look like it's open to me, Alyssa. You can save your game data here, sure. Okay. It does sort of have a haunting ground sort of feel to it. Yes, just save the game. Saving data. Okay, West Wing. So I'm guessing uh, holy water is an item that we have to collect. Oh, right. So run is default and then walking is uh, an option, right, by holding it down, by holding down a square. A strange pattern adorns the jar. It's brimming with fresh water. I guess that's holy water. Maybe we have to collect it, some sort of vessel to put it in, um, you know, in case Mr. Creepy Bastard Mr. Mr. Peter File comes back. We wouldn't want that now. Let's explore. See what we can find. It is filled with art and antiques. Grandfather used to collect that kind of thing. All right, so is this grandfather's house? Perhaps. It is locked. All guest rooms from this point forth. Uh, everybody's out. Yeah, never to return. So I'm guessing our mother is dead grandfather's room he's not here now it's been three years since he left when is he coming back wait a minute three years since he's left how does she know that i thought she'd been gone for six years which means she was sent away when she was seven. Oh well let's check upstairs yeah visually the game is nice you know it's definitely um, sort of high quality PlayStation 2 sort of stuff. Philip. Nothing of interest here. Well, not even Philip's door. Okay, we can't search that. Fine. Let's keep exploring. Yeah, this is already proving that, like, the Nightcry system of point and click, ooh, just is so inferior. I like having full control. Whoa. Well, that's electrifying. What the hell is that? Oh, a panic meter. Whenever Alyssa is feeling physically or emotionally threatened, the panic meter rises. When the panic meter reaches max, Alyssa falls into a state of panic. While in a state of panic, Alyssa's movements are restricted, and if attacked whilst in a state of panic, she will die. The panic meter reading will go down slowly if Alyssa relaxes in a safe place. Always keep an eye on the panic meter and try to minimize stress whenever possible. Okay. So I have interest. Right. So crouching and having a little bit of a squat or a crawl seems to get rid of our panic meter. Good to know, I suppose. Uh, so that's our health bar, basically. Um, that's not normal. And the fire literally just burnt out and burnt a hole in the... Oh, that's our room. Burnt a hole in the, the wall there. My room, nothing's changed. Okay. This is a big room. Worn books stand neatly in line. Not a speck of dust. Mum must have cleaned it for me. I guess now's not the time to take a nap. 
Not with Mr. Peter going around. It's locked and will not open. Really? And you don't... Oh! Got like a TV and a VCR? I wasn't expecting that. For some reason, I, I got a massive, um, like, 1930s vibe. So, all right. What is this? Lavender water. Interesting. Pray tell, does lavender water do? Cordial, distilled from beautiful purple flowers. It alleviates panic. Oh, that's interesting. And lavender is actually a calming herb as well. TV doesn't work. Maybe it's not plugged in properly. I'm disappointed, Alyssa. There's no PlayStation there or anything. Amateur. Got a nice little comfy gaming setup there as well. Oh, okay, there's two entrances into our bedroom. Don't like that. Not going to lie. Not a fan of that. Oh, well. Let's have a little stroll through here. What is that? A crying bloody statue. Oh. That's awkward. That looks like a bottle and a letter down there. Sacred bottle. I'm guessing we put holy water in that? Nancy's letter. Dearest Alyssa, I wanted nothing more than for you to live peacefully, but you are reading this now, or if you are reading this now, you must have come back to the house. For your protection, I am giving you some advice, as well as instructions on how to use this bottle of holy water. Holy water uses, uses exorcism. If you ever... If ever you are threatened, sprinkle some holy water on your assailant. It will cause them to halt temporarily. 2. Destroying sigils. To break the seal that prevent access to certain places, sprinkle holy water on them. Replenishing holy water. Always remember that the holy water you have is not in limitless supply. You can refill your bottle from either sacred jars or lion drinking fountains. Sentimental items and spirits. A person who has died of unnatural causes has unfinished business in the living world. In order to protect yourself, you must work to heal their wounds. To do so, you must find their sentimental item. Okay. Lastly, this is all my fault, but I will do my best to protect you. Please remember that I love you more than anything else in the world, and I always will. Mum. Okay, so we have holy water, which is our weapon of choice. So mummy did something naughty. Can we stand up, please? Thank you. And uh, that has caused bad nicks to arise, I guess. Where was that sigil room? Here it is. Okay. Oh, that seems to actuate quite quick as well. It's not a really slow sort of attack. Alright, what have we got here? Now, items do appear to be somewhat clearly highlighted. Restroom. Someone's behind the door. Holy water doesn't seem to work on this sigil. That's unfortunate. We've kind of squandered all of our holy water now. Nancy. Who is Nancy? Was Nancy our mum? Must have left in a hurry. The wardrobe is still open. I guess Nancy was our mum. Cinematics are not playing out correctly, I don't think. I 
you came back home. I know you told me not to, but I couldn't help it. Oh. I'm so worried about you. Where are you, Mum? So she came back home early. Gotcha. Mr. Peter. Looks like he's left his file behind. Interesting stuff. Where the hell are we now? Teleported through a door somehow. I guess that's going to be a mechanic that we're going to have to get used to. Door is still shut. Not great. Okay, well, I guess we've only got one way to go. I wish I'd topped up my holy water before. We got back to the 40s? Yep, I guess so. It's like World War II. That's suboptimal. London, 1940s. Poor girl, Jesus. Not where you want to spawn, to be honest. Okay. So, we have... Um, already stumbled into the time traveling mechanic. I did wonder if that was going to be something left until later. Um. Alright. Is there some kind of air raid shelter? So I wonder if, like, we go to certain zones and it mentions sentimental uh, items for people. I'm guessing, do we have to help enemies move on? Oh, okay. Interesting. Anyone in the phone box? Something is holding the door closed. Probably a person. Dude, it's like the whole back of his face has been blown off. Or should I say the whole back of his head? Alright, Alyssa, calm down. The ring. Give me back my ring. Um, I mean, we'll try. That was the last of our holy water, though. Oh. Okay. Spiritual healing. When you find a sentimental item that belongs to a person who has died of unnatural causes, return it to the rightful owner. If it is a ring, put it in its case. If it is a half-heart pendant, put it together with the other half. By returning these sentimental items, spirits are healed. And Alyssa may be able to obtain another item or valuable information in return. You know, I like this, actually. Curious as to why this got middling reviews. Yep, ex that explosion. But he looks as though he was burnt by something. Did an empty ring, an empty ring box. Did somebody steal the ring from him? Yes, they did. Uh, excuse me, love. I am trying to return your ring. How do I do that? We are out of the good stuff. 
Right, so we've got to use it from our inventory. Got ya. Yeah, if you weren't such a mardy bastard, you could have actually um, been saved a lot quicker. A sigil stone. All right, let's take a breather. There we go. That's an interesting mechanic that you can just sort of sit on the floor for a bit, chill out. I hope I did some good. Well, I guess so. Uh, kind of reminiscent of the original clock tower. Ah, brilliant. Gimme, gimme. It's a drinking fountain, shaped like a lion. You can save game... Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we'll give it a save. Sure. I like this, guys. I actually really like this. So we're 14 minutes in. Okay. I'm going to keep playing until my partner comes home. Until my fiancé comes home, I should say. I can hear a piano. Is it coming from that hall over there? I assume it would be. So we have a sigil, which I'm guessing we can break. And there's an item glinting just down below. Actually, let's have a look at the sigil stone that we got. We'll take an attack on your behalf just once. Huh. There's like a shield then. Okay, not sure how useful that's going to be, but... Really? Oh, we have... Oh, right. We didn't actually refill our bottle. That's worth noting. I assume that was an automatic process. You know what they say about assumptions? There we go. Bottle has been refilled. Excellent. Let's get out of here. Let's try that again. So we know we can get rid of the blue ones, apparently. Good to know. Now, whilst that has been done, let's go make sure our bottle is topped up. Hopefully, we can actually uh, upgrade that. So maybe we can hold a few more doses of the good stuff. Otherwise, we're going to be running to and from those uh, statues quite often, I guess. Although, maybe not. I don't know. It depends how well they're distributed, I suppose. I wasn't sure what to expect of this game, to be honest, but I'm impressed so far. Oh, hello. Yeah, you can piss off, love. Honestly. Love, look. Get out of here. What is this? It's covered in blood stains. A victim's belongings. The entry begins. My darling must be addressed to her fiance. Okay. That's interesting. So the ghosts, they're not like pursuer ghosts uh, or pursuer enemies. Like, for instance, in. I thought it was coming. Yep, she is coming down. Like, for instance, in Haunting Ground. Gold fountain pen. I guess that's what needs to be placed with the diary. Alright. Well, I wasn't expecting this to be sort of so straightforward. I'm guessing they're going to get quite cryptic later on. Let's put this person to rest. Smoking bowls and saving souls. An invisibility band. Interesting. Is that a single use affair? Yeah, I guess so. Ring worn for temporarily in temporary uh, temporary temporary if I could talk, thank you. Invisibility. Okay. I'm not sure what we have to hide from, but I'm I'm guessing that's gonna make itself pretty clear as we go into the game. Not a fan of this snow. 
I don't think Alyssa's really dressed for it. Oh, there are expensive looking suits on display. Christmas sale though. I guess even in the Blitz there are sales on. Notting Hill City Hall. So Notting Hill, uh, the, so the City Hall is where I'm guessing we're supposed to be heading towards. Ah, that's the item that we could see before. Let's have a little look this way, and then we're going to see if we can use the sigil. I'm guessing we can go in there. Hey, lavender water. And you know what? I actually really would like to try some lavender water. I'm genuinely curious. I know you can get lavender flavored drinks and chocolate and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of chocolate, but I would like to try lavender. I do like rose. Rose is a nice flavor. Can we go in? Okay, so going into doors and things is a little bit tricky. Ah. More lavender water. Cool. Helps calm those nerves. Guessing nothing's been looted. Ah. So we have proper hiding mechanics, I guess. Dad's letter. Dear May, how are you? I'm now in France in a region known as uh, Champagne. It's a beautiful place, with vineyards as far as the eye can see. When the war is over, we must come here together for a holiday. I hear that they have organised for blackouts in London now. I am sure that you are fine during the day, as Jane is there. But I worry about you being alone at night. You'll be alright, won't you, darling? Keep warm. With love, Daddy. Aww. It's rather touching. Um, now, can we go through this door? Okay, lock from the other side. A very Resident Evil thing. Let's check out the upstairs, if we can. Wow, look at all this glass. Just The whole area is just completely bombed out. Ah, uh, my cat has decided to come in and say hello. Nice little singer machine there. Classic. Still a surprising amount of those still available. Christmas tragedy. Young pianist brutally murdered. Christmas Day, 1942. Paul Mal. May Norton, age 12, was found murdered in Norton's The Tailor. She was discovered by Norton family nanny Jane Stride, who returned home to find the victim unconscious, bleeding from the head. An autopsy has revealed that it was an instantaneous death caused by a blow to the skull with a heavy, blunt object. No suspects have been named. The victim had taken part in the 15th annual piano uh, concourse at the Victoria Hall in Kensington. The previous day, a consummate pianist, Miss Norton, was widely tipped for first prize, but an unfortunate error in her performance prevented her from taking the crown. May had been living at home alone since her father, William Norton, a serving officer, returned to the front in July. So that was the letter to his daughter. Little did he know she was murdered. That doesn't sound good at all. The hell? Oh, whoa. Whoa. Bloody hell, that's heavy. Good lord. Alyssa. And now he's after us. Yay. 
And he's got a fuck off great big hammer and we've got uh, a little bottle of holy water. Evade points and hide points. When Alyssa is fleeing from an enemy, certain predetermined areas may start to glow. These are evade points and hide points. Approach the area and press the search button to make Alyssa take evasive action or repel her attacker. Note that most evade points can only be used once. Press the search button when in front of a hide point and Alyssa can take refuge there. The camera will switch to a first person view whilst hiding. Hide points can usually be used repeatedly, but if the panic meter reaches max whilst hiding, Alyssa will run out from her hiding place. Always keep an eye on the panic meter whilst hiding. That seems silly. Why would we... Oh god. Run! Run, Alyssa! Or you're gonna be murdered by a big hammer! Uh oh. <laughs> Taste my stream of justice, fucker. Alright. This is going to get worse before it gets better. We know this is going to get worse before it gets better. Ooh. Oh, wait. So they can they can literally see you go into these. And they still work. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, is he going to disappear, or is he just going to roam around? I'm guessing if the music disappears, he's gone. He's fucking jerking off up there, or what? I don't know what that sound effect was. Yeah, so I guess... I guess these enemies can be evaded permanently. Well, guys, I'm going to leave this one here. I think we have sampled quite a uh, juicy morsel. I like this, actually. I like this a lot. Uh, it's way better that we can actually attack the enemies back. That's kind of unique for the clock tower. Um, I would say the clock tower... And my capture software has been a bit weird. Uh, I would say that's quite a unique thing for the um, Clock Tower series. I like the idea that we can attack. Because usually you can fight the enemies off once. You know. Uh, possibly twice, I believe, in the original Clock Tower, actually. But after that, if you get caught again, you're dead. So to have that option there really adds um, a little bit more interactivity, I think. It's not like you just see the enemy and you roll your eyes because you, you know you're dead. I think this is a game that I'm probably going to play. I like the settings. Uh, it, it's very violent. Uh, it's not many games where you see um, a 12-year-old girl get horrifically murdered like that. In fact, I can't think of many. I mean... Most games shy away from that sort of thing to the point where they won't even show um, children in games. So to see that, I mean, games were different back then, you know, obviously. But yeah, that was quite something. And it makes me wonder what's going to be in store later on in the game. I guess at some point, guys, we're going to find out together. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.